Morning YouTube, this is video number three in the series I'm doing of why I'm leaving a company driver position and uh, getting into owner-operator hotshot. So, an update, where I left off was uh, Lewiston, Idaho, got down here to Boise, delivered that load, went home, did my 34 hours uh, off at home, and then ended up taking Monday off, which was October 5th, and uh, that way I could get some more Landstar stuff knocked out of the way. Um, right now, currently, it is October 6th, and I'm in Boise, so I'm giving you guys kind of a recap of the weekend, um, and some of the stuff that I had to do for Landstar. So yesterday, October 5th, I had to do a drug test, which was super fast, um, it was set up all through email, paid in advance, uh, to the drug testing facility, and I ended up having to drive from Nampa to Meridian to get that done which was like seven miles, not a big deal. And then um, they wanted me to do a DOT inspection on my new truck and my new trailer. So that was a bit of a process. Um, I had my truck um, in storage over in Caldwell, Idaho at a friend's house. So I had to go pick it up, drive it over to Boise, to the TA. And let me tell you something. Uh, <laughs> They don't deal with a whole lot of hotshot trucks to do inspections there, uh, especially for Landstar. I think the mechanic that was working on the inspection forms uh, has seen maybe one or two before, and it hadn't been within like the last six months. So he was still super fresh and new looking over this. The, uh, the forms are geared towards a tractor trailer, so obviously my trailer has electronic brakes. Uh, you know, it's not, there's a lot of stuff that they ended up having just to X off those forms because, um, it, do, it didn't apply to a hotshot truck. So went through, did all that. They screwed up the mileage, um, the final forms, my truck only from the upfitters and everything. I got it with 380 miles on it. Um, and now has 750 miles on the truck itself and, uh, they put 70,000, 25 miles. So we emailed Landstar the forms and we're going to see if they reject it out or question us on the uh, the mileage and everything to, you know, hopefully that's not a, a problem with them. And uh, if it is, hopefully it can be something to, you know, that'll be fixed fairly quick because once I got over to the TA in Boise, uh, they told me that they had openings and it was, I guess, 25, 30 minutes of me picking up the truck from Caldwell, getting over to Boise they got piled in with like five trucks that needed major services so i was there for about three and a half to four hours i got there i want to say right around nine nine thirty and uh yeah i didn't get out of there until almost three <laughs> so it was uh it was a long wait um not not super super fun i did meet somebody else doing hot shot work he came over we looked over kind of our setups and everything and uh, exchange numbers and, and whatnot just in case things don't work out. Um, you know, there's always opportunity. You gotta always keep your options open for stuff like that. Uh, but on a, on a good note, the truck and trailer obviously passed being brand new. Um, the drug test, like I said, was fast. It, it went, you know, maybe 20 minutes from doing the paperwork, you know, and then uh, the test itself, getting the paperwork and, and getting out of there. Uh, Landstar did, I guess the drug test company had some issues with the paperwork. So the hard copy that I got, I had to take a picture, upload it to the um, email that they, Landstar gave me to submit documents to. And uh, the driver pulse app that they use works for some things, um, other things not so much. So they uh, resort to their email. Um, as they're working out the bugs in the uh, driver pulse app. So anyway, long story short, got those forms all done. Um, the only concern was the mileage and everything was messed up on the, uh, you know, inspection. So if Landstar doesn't come back with, you know, any questions raised about that, we should be good to go. Um, I did have to do an additional form for release of revenue um, in the uh, other video that I posted. 
I mentioned that my, you know, I'm engaged. I have three kids from my previous marriage and my uh, fiance has got two kids. So we got five kids total, got a lot going on and my finances were not a hundred percent unless, I mean, selling a couple cars, doing some things in order to get the uh, business up and going. There would have been a lot of impact kind of at home financially, um, which if we had to, we would have done it. Um, but I ended up finding someone that I trust quite a bit. We sat down, ran some numbers, uh, figured out a good plan um, to pay, you know, the business, to pay myself out as driving, and then um, we added her onto the LLC. So now we're a multi-member LLC, and uh, you know, got her payment uh, agreement and everything uh, on how we divide funds up and uh, make it worth her while for helping us. Not only, you know, she had amazing credit which helped the down payments that we had to have on things and uh, she definitely helped with the down payment um, getting into the truck um, and I'll go into talking about the truck next I guess so I'll throw an image up or a few images up of what the truck looked like before and um, you know, go over more details of what we had to do to get it upfitted and who we dealt with over at the dealership so I will kick that off next All right, so as you can see from that picture, uh, the very first one anyhow, um, it was a cabin chassis uh, model. Uh, it's a brand new 2020 Ram 3500 Tradesman. Nothing super special about it. Um, and previous to this, when I was looking for a truck, I'd say about a month or two ago, um, they had a 2019 on their lot that it had a service bed. They ended up switching it over to being the flatbed, set up for gooseneck. And when I saw that on the lot, I was like, okay, I'm gonna try and pull some financing stuff together, get a down payment, like get some things figured out, and then I'll go and make an offer. And this truck was already, you know, it's a 2019 model. It's already 2020, getting ready to go to 2021. We were in September and uh, no joke made contact with the fleet operations manager there uh went over some paperwork stuff and was like okay well give me like a week and i'll come back for that truck so needless to say fast forward you know through that week i am on my way to go buy that 2019 ram 3500 and about five minutes before i get to the lot i get a call from the salesman there and he's all hey so i got bad news He's like, we have some other options, but I have some bad news. And I was like, well, what's up? And he's like, well, we literally just sold that 2019 Ram 3500 that you're wanting. I'm like, no way. Like, after it's been on your lot this long, you know, and and everything, I was, I was like, oh, man, blown away by it. A uh, bit heartbroken. I was like, God, that was the perfect truck. So when we get there, uh, he starts talking about other options, and we look at the new... 2020 Ram 3500, but it's just cabin chassis, and I think the price was like 55,000 or 57,000 uh, just for the cabin chassis. Not set up for hot shot, no, you know, uh, mud flaps, none of that stuff on it. Yeah, just a you know basic truck. And so started to talk with them. I'm like, okay, well, what would the price be to upfit? Like, I want it looking just like that 2019. Get me a flatbed. I'd like to get an auxiliary fuel tank, maybe, you know, a small storage thing for the back um, to piggyback on the uh, auxiliary fuel tank. And uh, so we started talking about that. And then he's like, oh, you know, we can also add this, this and this. And so I was like, well, a brush guard would be good because I know hauling all across the United States previous that I've had close encounter with livestock, um, you know, deer, wildlife, all that. And uh, so I was like, okay, well, you know, get me a quote for upfitting, you know, a nice brush guard bumper deal on the front. The auxiliary fuel tank, I only wanted a 60 gallon because on these new Rams, they have a 52 gallon uh, tank underneath. And so 
um, you know, it's like 110 gallons of fuel. That should be plenty. <laughs> and then, um, you know, on top of the fuel tank and the storage stuff, I wanted the flatbed on there and set up for, for the whole gooseneck deal. So he was like, all right, give me like three or four days and I'll get back to you and let you know. Well, three or four days go by and he's like, Hey man, I apologize. Like I hadn't gotten back to you and got you some numbers, but he's like, your truck will be ready Friday. And I'm like, Friday, like I just needed to, you know, see, see what you guys are going to charge and everything for all this. Like I haven't even got the numbers for that. And, uh, he's like, well, the bumper's coming in a little delayed due to the COVID stuff. They're having a hard time, you know, producing a lot of the stuff. And, uh, he's like, yeah, the 60 gallon fuel tank, that's not a problem. Uh, but he's like, it'll be here and it'll be ready Friday. So that Friday rolls around and, uh, <laughs> we go and check out the truck and he was like, so we ate the cost on the 60 gallon tank because those two tanks that they showed that they had available, they were upfitting them on two other flatbeds. So I was like, okay. And he's all like, well, we put an 85 gallon tank on there. So on top of the 52 gallons that I have on the truck, now I have an 85 gallon. And then, uh, he was like, hey, you know, the flatbed or whatever, um, you know, that's installed regular price, but the, the bumper was delayed a little bit. It'll be here in a day or two. And so I was like, all right, well, I needed to go. I put, you know, as I was doing this stuff, I was trying to find a 40 foot trailer because everybody was like, you know, you need a 40 foot. And so looking, 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 and same thing, dude to COVID, a lot of the manufacturing was so far behind that anything that was on its way out of the factory was like future ordered as already pre-purchased, um, you know, and I happened to find a 40 foot 22 GN big Tex at a trailer sales company in Boise, Idaho. And so, um, put $200 down on that and then I posted something on Facebook and my friend's like, Hey, like you guys, you know, we can only be 65 feet long. Um, you know, one of my friends that does hot shot. And so he's like, why don't you take that new Ram? Cause I've heard that they're, um, a bit longer. So go down, hook up to it and go check it out. So ran down, talked to the fleet manager and was like, Hey, can I use your dealer plates? I just need to run to Boise real quick, hook up to this and I got to figure this stuff out. Right. And with Landstar, they say that you can only be 65 feet in total length. So, mind you, the truck doesn't have the front grill guard bumper um, mounted on it or anything. So, uh, the Ram dealership lets us use the plates. We run down, hook up. I measure it three different times just because I wanted to be sure. And no kidding, that truck with that 40-foot gooseneck... Uh, big Tex trailer was right at 66 feet. So I knew with that other that bumper that it was another maybe eight to Eight inches to a foot longer and so I was like, oh, well, do you guys have a 35 footer, you know, or Anywhere in between there just something underneath 40 foot and they're like, oh right now. No, like So I started calling, you know, a couple other companies. I checked in with uh, the trailer manufacturing place that sold Snake River trailers and they're like, well, we have a 34 footer. It's got the mega ramps. And I'm like, ah, oh, I don't really want a 34 footer because I'm already, you know, if I'm backing five feet off, I'm already losing feet, you know, footage and stuff. And uh, yeah, so it was like three hours later when I left the Boise uh, trailer company um, place that I was looking at that one that I had the deposit on. And they give me a phone call and they're like, hey, check this out. And this happened to be. I think by this time it was now Monday or Tuesday um, when I went and checked with them and they're like, by some weird grace, we'll have a 22 GN that is the 30 plus five. So you'll have 35 feet, um, you know, and that's including the ramps when they're, they're folded back on the trailer or whatever, but they're like, we'll have, it'll be 35 feet. It'll be here brand spanking new, nothing put on the deck, none of that. And uh, that'll be here Friday. Do you want us to move your deposit and put it on that? And I was like, well, heck yeah. Mind you, on top of this, Landstar's throwing paperwork through emails. and like, hey, we need you to get this done. And I'm like, my time is running out to getting a trailer. And uh, the truck's, you know, done for the most part other than the uh, front bumper. And I'm, I'm just ecstatic. I'm like, okay, like if all this can fall in line, in place, this would be, this would be sweet. It'd be a miracle. So, uh, yeah, we ended up 
you know, fast forward into that Friday, they ended up having some issues or something. They were going to um, load it with a few truck bed trailers, um, like assembly deals for flatbeds uh, and on that trailer that we put our deposit on. And then they were going to haul it from Caldwell, Idaho, from the Big Tex plant there and move it over there to Boise. Well, that didn't happen on Friday. So we we're hoping Saturday and Saturday rolls around and we didn't hear anything back from them on Saturday until about closing time. And they're like, hey, Monday for sure. So I'm like, oh gosh. So Monday rolls around, happen to be in town and they uh, call us and they're like, hey, you know, trailer's ready. You want to do it? I'm like, all right, cool. So you know, my business partner was like, all right, like I, we could not find financing a hundred percent, um, to put it underneath the business because we're a new business starting up under this LLC. So she put it in her name and, um, you know, with her credit and everything, they didn't need anything else down other than that $200 that we initially put down. So we get the trailer, everything's good. Um, you know, we're all set up and so now we're just like waiting on Landstar um, but while we're waiting on that trailer to be finished the uh, truck ended up the bumper came in so the Ram dealership um, installed that and that, all that stuff was taken care of in our financing so out the door with the um, Ram with the upfitting and everything that was done we got out of there for $64,000 which the add-ons if we were to do it independently on our own um, the truck before with a bed on it was running right around 68, you know, and the up, up charge on all this stuff was about $8,100 for the tank, the bed, and the, uh, the rush guard plus the labor to put it on. So I feel like we got a still of a deal on it, especially right now when these are in high demand and, uh, whatnot. So like I said, feel that we got a still on the truck, the trailer brand new. I mean, you know, there was nothing that we've had to add to it yet. Um, we will be looking at, um, like the sliding ratchets or whatever for the, uh, six inch straps. But, uh, other than that, that, I mean, the trailer's beautiful. Um, you know, all this equipment being brand new, we didn't want to run the chance of something breaking and having us shut down being a new business or getting on with Landstar and how bad that would look to them being like, oh, well, we have equipment failure right out the get go. Not saying that can't happen with new equipment, but it mitigates the possibility of that happening now. So, um, you know, in the slides you can see the uh, truck, the trailer. Um, I'll add a video or maybe some pictures here in a little bit that uh, show that we got the bed in, sanded it down a little bit, brought it back to our house, and uh, I did like a weather coating UV protection on it. A lot of guys were recommending that. That way the rain doesn't totally destroy the bed um, as well as moving, you know, pallets on and off. It'll give it a little bit more protection. Um, so we did that, we did weather sealed it and everything. But uh, yeah, so now, like I said, we did the uh, drug test, DOT stuff. I think the only thing that we have left right now, uh, we submitted our release of revenue form so that way Landstar is not obligated to pay out my co-owner to the business. Um, that'll be something that's divided through our individual payroll, uh, which I believe we're probably going to gear towards using ADP. A lot of places have used QuickBooks and stuff and uh, just to keep track of money and expenses, but it's like not ADP. Uh, I've used them or had them, I should say, with other companies and their online access, their communication to their reps and everything when you call in are super fast super knowledgeable and uh just you know gets the job done when you're already called stressed about something they're a great company to deal with so no plug towards them it's just personal preference of the experience that i've used from them so um yeah we you know got the release of liability which we had to have notarized so my um co-owner went down and did that yesterday while i was doing the drug test and dot inspection and right now, uh, it looks like the only thing that we're waiting on is a four hour class um, for defensive driving. It's an online class that's mandatory that everybody takes uh, when they get on with Landstar. After that's complete, I believe the next step is getting an orientation date. So I'm really hoping that comes through today. Um, sorry for the traffic <laughs> in the background. I'm right off the 
a like sub highway over here in Boise. But uh, yeah, so after that's good and we get an orientation date, I mean, it'll be super exciting and we can go from there and uh, be on our way to starting our career as owner operators doing the hot shot truck and stuff. So it's super exciting. Um, when I was doing the DOT inspection, I ran into another hot shot guy there um, who runs for himself. He has his own authority. He's like, you'll make so much money. It's, it'll definitely be worth your time. If you're already out Monday through Friday, you know, you are, you might as well make as much money as you can. You know, why make a thousand dollars, you know, when you could make five, six thousand dollars. And, uh, he's like, it's life changing. So it's nice to hear, you know, a lot of people be affirmative in that. Um, again, you know, I, I think in a previous video I attached, you know, a little information, but I did some research in this and I'm not going for my own, um, own authority right now, just an owner operator and leasing on eventually once, you know, we see how this takes off and what it can flourish into, we'll invest into buying another truck or two and, uh, getting a couple drivers to work for us. Um, and kind of, you know, building a, a, a more, com you know, better company, I should say, than, uh, just a one truck show um, if we could get a fleet of essentially like four to eight trucks and the, the long term you know thing then that would be awesome um, but a lot of guys that I follow on YouTube that have given a lot of good guidance you know and I'll give these guys shout outs you know through this entire process is uh, Toe Piglet been a huge fan I have watched from video one all the way to where he's you know what he releases today same thing with uh a YouTuber named Holland Cash. Um, just seeing how those guys got into hot shot trucking, some of the things like if they came from previous background of truck driving, um, you know, and with Alex, um, correct me if I'm wrong, bud, but I believe he started out as a dispatcher and, um, you know, running freight and doing stuff like that. And then was like, oh, I got into it for himself. And, you know, he's doing really, really well. Um, Last few videos I've watched from him, he's hiring drivers. Um, he, he made a video saying that he's gonna maybe hire a dispatcher, and uh, you know, same thing with Hall and Cash. He got into a big truck, got out, and he's doing this hot shot stuff, and uh, you know, it's where the money's at. Um, we do have to be, you know, conscious, just like everything else. I was in oil and gas industry for a while, mining. Anytime you get up around an election time, things can kind of fluctuate in freight. So if you're just starting this right now, it could be a little rocky or it could just maintain itself and be fine, especially since we're coming out of this COVID stuff, it seems like, um, you know, I know here in Idaho, some things are lessening up in uh, the Canyon County area and, um, you know, just kind of the Northwest and generals easing off on some of the restrictions. Um, so it should be promising and, uh, always the end of the year it seems like freight slows down people get new budgets and everything for the next year so you know our real true numbers will definitely come in next year probably around february march um as far as the uh upswing to everything and it'll be interesting to see how we have to position our our truck this year um especially snow and uh whatnot which you know hits our country and we're going to be able to operate in the northwest still if we're going to be shooting you know more running around the south uh, it'll just be a great experience to kind of see how logistically we gotta you know make the most sense of this and uh, super excited to join on with landstar so um, yeah stay tuned i'll throw some more pictures up here and uh, maybe kind of a short clip video of uh, my kids <laughs> and i um, sealing the deck and everything on that trailer but uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below. You're uh, more than welcome to email us at our company email, which is Flid Transport um, LLC at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, if there's anything that we can put into a video to maybe help some of you guys out that are new to hot shot trucking, um, you know, I'm going through the process right now, so it's a good time to ask questions. Um, even if it's you know future later on if you see this video, please you know add down below and I'll be happy to answer anything and everything that I can but uh, yeah, you guys stay tuned for video number four. Thanks